Uh, welcome everyone to another session of DevConf 2022. Uh, my name is Andrei Veselov and me and Richard Filo are moderating this session. Uh, uh, next up we have Robert Spall speaking about how data helps to make a better city. Uh, this session is lead and uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat and use the Q&A section. And from now on, I'm uh, giving the word to speaker and uh, Robert, yeah, you can start. See you thank, soon. Uh, thank you very much, Andre. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone uh, and uh, I think we can start. Uh, Q&A will be at the end, so you can type your questions and I'll answer them later on. I'll share my screen firstly. Uh, Hopefully you can see it. This is a little bit. So, uh, as we all know, cities are immensely complex organisms that uh, millions of people uh, every day live in, work in, and uh, do lots of kinds of stuff. And uh, for every city that wants to be successful and every city that uh, wants to bring a high quality life uh, to its citizens, it needs to be managed well, it needs to be managed wisely. And uh, without the data, uh, it's uh, incredibly impossible uh, nowadays. So without data, you cannot make yourself, your city successful. Uh, instead of talking about how uh, important is the data and uh, how significant it is, I would like to focus this uh, presentation more on uh, practical showcases and use cases, how uh, data and uh, data analytics uh, improves the lives of our citizens in here in Brno City. Uh, before uh, I start, uh, a little bit of disclaimer. Uh, I'm from the data and analytics department of Brno City uh, and uh, and uh, most of the or all of the all of the use cases and showcases I'm going to uh, demonstrate here can be found in at the datahub.brno.cz. Uh, mo most of them, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, is are in English, are in Czech. Uh, in English, we have only several apps and and, uh, and tools. You can find them in the section apps, or if you are a Czech speaking person, you can uh, go to the Czech version and all of them are in the app section there as well. So uh, after we have this done, uh, we can start with our uh, with our use cases and, and examples. So the first one I would like to introduce, and uh, it's uh, quite, uh, I would say it's a typical use case. Uh, as a city, we manage uh, thousands and thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands uh, data points. Uh, you can imagine it uh, when you walk on the, on the street, there are benches, there are lampposts, there are uh, technical networks, uh, underground, uh, there are buildings, uh, parks, greenery, there are containers for recyclables uh, and many, many, many things. Uh, even uh, um, it can be physical and also can be uh, non-physical, such as the crime data and things like that. And uh, for for the most of the uh, for for the most of those, we have passports and uh, GIS system, systems where we uh, input those data and we uh, and we do them decision making based on the on the on the data from those passports here this one uh, you can see the passport of the, the greenery uh, every uh, where every tree every uh, every green area is uh, cataloged and uh, in Brno for example in Brno city greenery is uh, managed by the city districts but those districts get the money from the city from the central city and they get it get it based on what is in the passport so if they manage their passports well they get uh, more money so this is uh, one i would like uh, i would like this to be like um, to show you or tell you this is the main uh, this is a very typical use case of passports and uh, of passport data we we have in the city and without them we wouldn't be able to manage and to uh, to work properly. So after this one, uh, there is another really nice use case or example. We use a heat map 
of uh, Brno City, we uh, we make a heat map every couple of years, I think four, and this uh, heat map uh, allows uh, environmental department to see the changes in the, in the in the heat uh, in, in the heat in the temperature of temperatures uh, across the years, so they can uh, react or adapt and uh, plant more trees in the area or something or similar. Uh, this is uh, very uh, very widely used to for for the for this for the by the environmental department. Another uh, really cool example is uh, insulation map, which shows uh, how much energy uh, is falling from the sun on on the on the buildings and areas in in the city. So here, as you can see on the left, I have a legend which uh, says and states how much energy, uh, how much kilo, how many kilowatts per year per square meter are falling on uh, certain surfaces. So here, for example, you can uh, clearly see that these surfaces are much more insulated and uh, you can uh, build your uh, solar power plants there. Uh, city is launching, um, uh, no, it is launching uh, uh, a bit recently. City launched um, a huge uh, uh, building program for uh, solar panels on uh, city buildings. And we are daily using this map to evaluate each city building and put uh, panels on the buildings where it would be most efficient and most useful for us and would bring the most energy. Uh, the app can be also used by private citizens or private companies, anyone basically, but we use it in uh, this way. So if you are from Brno City and you want to install solar panels on your rooftop, you can have a look and check out uh, how, how much energy would you get. Uh, another really uh, nice example we have or uh, we use uh, is uh, we use um, we use mobile phone data about uh, that uh, that tell us how how many people are where and uh, how people move all across uh, the different parts of the city. Here you can see the graphs of uh, of rhythms of uh, several uh, city districts. So uh, we can see during the day that you can see the time during the day. We can see how many people stay in uh, each district or in each part of the city. And this helps us uh, to uh, to uh, divide the city in certain districts. So, so for example, the red ones are highly uh, work districts uh, and the, 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 the blue ones are uh, mostly residential districts uh, and we also we can also see what is the strength of the flow of the people be, between the different uh, different parts of the town uh, you would uh, ask why is it useful or what do we use it for so for example when there is a big construction uh, uh, coming or big uh, uh, transportation project as it was a case with the uh, tram to the university campus uh, last uh, two years ago we had to ask for funds from the eu and from the central government national government and uh, as a part of uh, a part of the documents and uh, uh, was used uh, was this data which uh, which uh, said how many people were traveling to the university campus area each day, how, how, how utilized would be the public transport in this area. And uh, at the end, we got the funds and partly it was uh, because of the data we had and we could successfully argue that, oh, we need the tram here because so many and so many people come here every morning, every day, and so on, so on. So, so in this way, we can uh, really easily uh, identify uh, high flow areas in the city. Another uh, quite uh, uh, another example from the transportation uh, topic is the uh, is the biking uh, data. We have our transportation department didn't have for many years uh, bike intensity uh, intensities all across the city, so they couldn't plan properly. And uh, after so many years, we were able to acquire a data set uh, which is uh, uh, which is updated every every year, and it's a data set of uh, of all biking rides uh, in May. Uh, of those people who go uh, to work and who are enrolled in the in the in the action called bike to work or uh, project bike to work so uh, we 
have uh, we get uh, every year a new data that say how many people are biking on on a certain street. So here you can see if I click in the map, you can see uh, that the bike intensities how do they change and how big are they? And and our colleagues at the de uh, transportation department they get the uh, overall picture and if they want to create some project they can uh, use these data from this app we also incorporated the bike uh, uh, bike accidents uh, those are the numbers you can see here so this cluster represents bike accidents since 2012 so you can also easily see which uh, sections and uh, what parts of the network are com uh, are, are problematic and that helps as well so that's another one uh, Another case from the environmental department is that uh, here you can see a map of, uh, of uh, uh, containers for recyclables for which are publicly available. Uh, here, these dots or circles you can see, these are, these represent, each, each represent the uh, container. So blue ones are for paper, uh, yellow ones are for plastic, and the brown ones are for biological and so on, so on, uh, biological waste and so on, so on. And our, our colleagues and the environmental department, they uh, have to distribute this and they should distribute these uh, bins uh, regularly and uh, most efficiently. But uh, for, till now, they didn't have any tool to do it. They did it by just like uh, with the side and with the best guess. As you can see, uh, the, the network is not perfect. The network is not very regular. Uh, and uh, sometimes there are gaps, but they had no scientific way or, uh, yeah, they didn't have any scientific way to to assess if, if, if the network is uh, efficient and so on. So that's why we are going to implement uh, next uh, month. Uh, they will get the new map in uh, in their system in in this one you can see they will get a new map of uh, of uh, walking uh, distances to each uh, to each uh, bin so they will see where in the city there are gaps and where they should put the new containers so for example here you can see these are i think uh, 200 300 and 500 meters to each container and if i draw containers you can see these are the containers for uh, glass and as you can see, uh, there, there you, you get the model which tells you how efficient your network is. So, so our colleagues at the environmental department can very quickly and easily uh, assess uh, th that efficiency and will be able to create much more uh, just and, and much more efficient uh, recyclables uh, containers uh, network. Uh, another uh, example is from the transportational uh, department as well. Uh, for those who live in uh, Brno city municipality, uh, you know that the public transport here, here is uh, quite great and we are very proud of it. But uh, as you know, everything is get, getting more complicated and complex. So uh, to stay on the top and have uh, that efficient system, we uh, needed to uh, develop a tool that would allow our uh, our transportational planners to plan the traffic and plan uh, the the whole network much more efficiently so here you can see the app and there are some inputs you can you can you can input <laughs> basically and uh, you can choose oh, you can choose uh, day of the week you can choose time of the week you can choose a travel interval for each zone number of zones and then you can choose the address and you can you click in the map you wait for the model to calculate and uh, oh i have to refresh it i'm sorry i uh, and uh, then it will output it will give you output of uh, of uh, accessibility rings or polygons which will show you how uh, how is your neighborhood or how is the city uh how is the city uh, uh trans how how is access the city or the area accessible by the public transport yeah all right when the demonstration doesn't work it worked a bit ago 
once once more please but uh da, 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 da. I'm, no, I'm not sure why it didn't work but i checked it out a moment before and hopefully it, it works now because it's quite difficult to imagine if you don't see it so so hopefully yeah it's doing something so hopefully it's no it's all right now uh it's used by our public transport planners but the app is accessible to the general public as well so you can uh, for example if you're looking for a new flat in brno and you have a job somewhere and you want that job or, or that flat to be i don't know 20 minutes from the job by the public transport you can use the model and to see what areas are suitable for your for your uh for your new flat, for example. The app is built on top of the GTFS data. For those of who you don't know GTFS, uh, it's a basically electronic uh, schedule of, uh, of uh, trams and buses and all the vehicles in the, in the system. And it doesn't work. It's usual, <laughs> it's perfect for the demonstration. It's, if something breaks, it needs, needs to break. I'm sorry, I have to go, but uh, I, I can guarantee you it works. I tried it before. I don't know what happened now. Uh, mm -hmm. So we also have a um, uh, main architect of the city of Brno, uh, which uh, which uh, works, uh, which creates a, the master plan and evaluates uh, new projects. Uh, or, and they also uh, they also uh, they also build and, and, and uh, develop new uh, new squares and uh, streets and they design how they should look. And this is one of the tools that help them to evaluate and assess how, what should, and how, what and how the city or street or the public space should look like and or the buildings. So here you can see my, my mouse goes to every building or, or every building in the city and you can see, unfortunately it's in Czech only, but you can see uh, the functions of the building. So if it's uh, if it's for living, for commercial use, uh, for storage use, if it's a technical building and so on and so on. So for every building, it uh, shows the specifications and this is a live model which is updated and, uh, and uh, and live so if something changes in the city it changes here and uh, everyone can really easily use it as well and another uh, app that uh, main architect and uh, also uh, architects uh, and uh, construction engineers use is a 3d model which you can see here uh, which is uh, quite uh, used um, you can very easily model whatever you want to build uh, in a city and how it fits to the uh, surroundings. So for example, you want to build a building, uh, you want to fit it in a model, you can uh, download the model, which is accessible on the, on the data platform and you can fit it in there and you can uh, console, uh, you can uh, negotiate with our department, with uh, city departments, how and what uh, should the building look like uh, here in the model you can uh, see you can do some several things so, so for example you can see how how your building affects the uh, the shadows and creating and making shadows uh, in the in its surroundings and many many more things i encourage you to use that app and because it's uh, really really nice and another thing I would like to showcase, um, we have also real-time data of uh, public transit in our city. And uh, so far, uh, the public transit data wasn't utilized for any decision-making and uh, policy planning. And uh, fortunately, that changes soon. Uh, in next two or three months, we should launch a, a new app that will uh, uh, that will show uh, places uh, and identify spots in the city where public transit uh, is uh, creating or, or is delayed more than usually and this will for example help our colleagues at the transportation department and planning agency uh, to identify those spots and hopefully uh, remove those uh, uh, clogging spots where where uh, where vehicles are uh, where vehicles are uh, delayed so for example here you can see there is a huge crossroad and 
there is a delay uh, happening there. So hopefully in the in the in the future we'll be able to uh, remove that. And uh, so this, for example, the one you see, the demonstration you can see here is line eight. It's a tram. It goes from one end of the city to another. And these uh, uh, bright yellow areas are the areas where that delay happens. So this was it. And uh, uh, one more thing I wanted to uh, showcase. Another thing we are working currently on is uh, is uh, is the problem that several of our streets in the city are quite narrow and uh, only one way and quite long. So when the garbage truck goes to the to that street, they uh, they clog whole street and the traffic jams occur for so for many many minutes like 20 30 40 minutes uh, easily uh, here in the map you can see the the one such a typical street which is called francouska which is very long and the uh, garbage truck creates more than half an hour uh, delays there uh, we uh, and then this is not the only street and we got many many complaints from the citizens that this is a problem so we tried to find a solution and after careful consideration because there were many solutions which were all right but that they would be really really expensive we decided to go uh, with the data solution uh, we will be providing uh, navigational companies such as Waze uh, or Garmin with the uh, positional data of our garbage trucks they will incorporate those data in their navigations so when a garbage truck enters such a street the drivers with navigations will will get the will get the warning. We'll see it in the map, and we'll get we will will be told uh, and advised to take another route. So, for example, you take uh, Merhauto and Milady Horakove route instead of the Francouska when you see that there is a, a garbage track. In this way, uh, this will be very efficient and cost efficient, and and it we hope that it will it will uh, it will. Uh, get rid of, get us rid of the problem we have yeah yeah and that's it basically actually okay uh that i appeared right in time uh i'm yeah i would i wanted to say that i'm very sorry the, to interrupt but if is that that's it so it's okay uh yes please uh you have a few questions and I, I can read it for you uh the first one is we have we have three minutes left. So, the first one is how does something like a bike incidents get tracked? Yeah, uh, they get tracked by the police. So only the the serious ones. So, for example, when you have a little bump or whatever, that doesn't happen. But the police has a really detailed uh, has a very and uh, very detailed statistics about the bike data, and we get this data yearly uh, uh, every year. So. This is basically the way. They even get attributes like uh, what was the weather and what was the road condition and things like that. So, so uh, I didn't showcase it, but we have uh, several dashboards. Not we, but the transportation department has several dashboards where they can uh, examine in detail those uh, bike traffic data. Thank you. And the next one: Do you gather any data that shows the noise level in the different parts of the city? No, we don't. But uh, the Ministry of Health uh, does every four years uh, noise pollution maps. They create those maps every four years, uh, and uh, and we get that data from them. Uh, we unfortunately don't have the last data, but in 2021 they did the research again, and this year we should be getting the data with the map, and everything should be as well open as well. Thank you. We have one minute left, so uh, two more questions. It's a little unclear to me which is which of those use cases you showed throughout the presentation are actually being used to plan stuff right at this moment by the city. Uh, so, for example, <laughs> I'm sorry for for the app that didn't work for the for the modeling of. Uh, transit accessibility the app that didn't work i don't know why but for example that app is used by the transportation planners to design the network so for example now they 
it's difficult to explain when, they, when you didn't see it, but they have uh, they have this app. They know that, for example, with the app, they know that, for example, this part of the city is uh, is uh, less accessible by tram than the, this part of the city. They can compare it. They and they and they know. They now know with this information that they should improve the accessibility of that region of the city. So, for example, that was uh, one thing. Another one, for example, the greenery passport. Without that. Uh, our um, city districts they wouldn't know how big uh, how how big uh, budget they need for maintenance of of their greenery because they wouldn't know how much of uh, green uh, areas there are how mu how 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 much of uh, cutting of uh, grass how much care of the trees because they go they also i didn't show it there i showed just the map but they get also statistics uh, overall statistics so they it shows in your uh neighbor, in your city district there is uh x y trees there is a fifth x y meter squared of grass and so on so they use it for calculation and uh, it, it is with like that with uh, most of the cases. Only cases which is not like that is ones we are currently working on or that are very new. So that's the question. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. We have really strict. We have really strict uh, time uh, timings. So I need. Uh, I think we we are finished here and. Uh, yeah, I'm saying thank you to the speaker and thank you to the audience. Uh, it was really impressive presentation. Thank you very much.